Nigeria is 98% religious, whilst Norway is 73% irreligious. Why does Norway fare better than Nigeria? Nigeria houses some of the world's largest Christian and Muslim populations, whilst Norway has a large non-religious population. Religion is set to make people good and things better. Why, though, does the evidence not support the claim in Nigeria? As much as Nigeria is home to a large religious population, it is also the abode of some of the most rotten and corrupt individuals and happenings the world has ever seen. A contradiction in terms, if it must be said, what about the derelict state of the country fostered by people who claim to be religious and who claim to believe in a God that is just and good? Then there's no way a non-religious country that is thriving greatly with more honest and transparent citizens. If religion is a criterion for morality and national prosperity, then why? has nowhere prospered so much. Does that mean that Nigeria has been abandoned by God? In this video, I will explore Nigeria's attachment to religion and how set religion has deteriorated the country in contrast to Norway's multifaceted advancement. Are not religious people to be blessed? When the Christian Bible says, blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. What comes to mind is a picture of church-going Nigerians who live in abject poverty and never fail with either the physical or spiritual advantages of life. Religion permeates every aspect of Nigerian life, with a large number of Nigerians from different walks of life publicly and unapologetically demonstrating their religiosity. Yet, according to the Brookings Institution, Nigeria has surpassed India as a country with the largest number of poor people. In Nigeria, about 43% of Nigerians, which amounts to 89 million people, live below the poverty line, whilst another 25%, that is 53 million people, are vulnerable. Still, most, if not all, of these individuals practice one of the two borrowed Abrahamic religions dominant in the country, Christianity and Islam. Belief in the indigenous belief system is less than a generation away from extinction. To be successful in politics, professing one's submission to either of the Abrahamic duplies is contingent. From the helm of affairs in the country to the common man on the street, public display of adherence to either deity of the Abrahamic Jubilee has become commonplace. The question is thus that if the dogma of the Jubilee of Abrahamic religions infers morality, why is immorality so prevalent in Nigeria? An irony, would you agree? This is where Norway comes in. It is irreligious in its own right. With laws based on secularism, it has experienced growth and prosperity that if the tenets of Nigeria's Abrahamic Jubilee, Christianity and Islam, were to be translated verbatim, ought to go to Nigeria and those countries that believe in the existence of God or Allah instead, Norway's economy, political climate, social development and infrastructure, among others, stand out. It is the beacon of freedom, human rights and stability with some of the highest incomes in the world. You can't help but wonder, is religion relevant to national growth and development? Norway's GDP growth stands out at 502 billion, whilst Nigeria's 
stands at 506 billion. Bear in mind that Norway has a population 40 times smaller than Nigeria's, yet has comparable GDPs to Nigeria. On the per capita category, the difference could not be clearer. Norway has $92,600 per head against Nigeria's $2,300, which is 40 times higher and outrageously unacceptable. We are again sent back to the foundation of this video. Is Nigeria forsaken by God, or is it not properly following the tenets of its religious purpose? It has got to be either, otherwise, a case for questioning the religion and its dogma is unavoidable. That is the problem we have in us. So it is not about prayer. We pray, in fact, we are, the, we are the best praying nation in the whole world. We go to the mountain, we go to the forest, we have the, the most beautiful churches in the whole world. Our pastors are the richest in the whole world. If it is prayer, these people would have helped us out. Why does a religious Norway fare better? The religious books profess blessings upon people who seek to worship the one true God, but it becomes a thing of concern when these blessings refract from the people who are the most religious. According to Gallup International, Nigeria is the world's second most religious country. Daily, hourly, and almost the entirety of Nigerians call on the God that they serve to bless them, but there seems to be no response. The Bible, for instance, records in many verses that the needs of those who serve God will always be taken care of. That God will generously provide all their needs. Then they will always have everything they need with plenty left over to share with others. The Quran equally records the provision of Allah for his believers recording that he found orphans and gave them refuge, and he found lost and guided them, and he found them poor and made them self-sufficient. Both God and Allah make promises of provision and sustenance to their followers in their various religious books. But when put into context of Nigeria, these promises lack evidence and in translatable, practical, workable reality do not ring true. A lot of Nigerians barely have enough to eat and are abandoned. Many others are homeless and hopeless. Again, a seismic contradiction of dogmatic catastrophe. For if one says that one believes in a being who is supreme and who makes outrageous promises, should not one's needs be met completely? That's the elephant question in the room. Norway, in contrast, has no official religion and thus upholds no religious doctrines as a country. Instead, they uphold the doctrine of the law. The Norwegian government put laws in place that facilitate the proper running of the country. But it is not just about putting laws in place. What is most important is that these laws are enforced and implemented. Deterrence is key. The implementation part is what triggers deterrence. This has produced more law-abiding citizens than we find in Nigeria. Norway's law enforcement services are provided by the country's single national police force called Politi, I hope I pronounced it correctly, comes with Norwegian, which is part of the Ministry of Justice and Police, with a strength of more than 16,000 men and women for a population of just over 5 million, the force adequately exercises its activities in its 12 police districts. However, in Nigeria, the police force is constituted by corrupt and despicable individuals who are unable to carry out their duties and who would rather wait for God to intervene in a riotous situation than stepping to do their jobs. Norway continues to fare better in diverse areas because it takes 
their actions needed to make the country better, albeit majorly atheistic or irreligious, bear in mind. There are intentional efforts put towards national building and development and towards the implementation of policies that are not perceptible in Nigeria. Why? Because people would rather hide under the umbrella of religion than do the right things. Sadly, in truth, the practice of religion in Nigeria is systemically faulty. It has been unsuccessful in impacting positively on many areas, including the government. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation and that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But again, these biblical blessings have eluded Nigeria. The fact is that neither Nigeria nor its leaders are righteous. Instead, there is so much oppression, injustice, corruption and abuse of power in the country. One can question the veracity of the religious beliefs proclaimed by those at the helm of power in Nigeria. Because if they truly believed in a hell, they would not be looting from the national purpose inflicting generations of Nigerians into lifetimes of poverty. For hell ought to wait for them. But hey, no, they don't care. So, do they really believe in the punishment of hell as mutually dogmatized by the Abrahamic Jupiter? At this point, I ask you, my viewers, to consider this current discourse. The goal is neither to bash religion or believe in God, nor to encourage irreligiosity. Rather, it is a question why an irreligious country like Norway prospers more than a religious one, and to understand if a country's interest in religion makes a difference in a nation's development, progression, or even sustainability. In everything, there should be moderation. And until Nigeria and Nigerians understand that more effort should be put into the growth of the nation at different strata, the country may not reach prosperity, whether it believes in God or not. We are not bashing a religion. I want to repeat this again. We're just trying to compare the two. Looking at Norway, its prosperity, stability, it has one of the largest foreign reserves in the world. It produces oil, I believe more than Nigeria actually, it doesn't touch its oil reserves. If Norwegian reserve were to be split among each Norwegian, they will make over $150,000 each. This is a country, one of the lowest crimes in the world. It is hospitable, welcoming to foreigners. It has hosted lots of African refugees, yet it does not believe in God. It is basically an irreligious country, yet prosperous. Nigeria, on the other hand, is the entire opposite. We were trying to contrast and compare and not bash. If you think we're wrong, if we offended you, if you have a constructive argument, please do so in the comment section below or send us an email at info We will be more than happy to engage and we will explain our position. If there's anything you think we went wrong, we are willing to retract that statement and make another video to correct it. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to be notified whenever we publish videos like this. Thank you.